Okay, so I have another 50 inch Samsung, it's a PS50, C96 HD, pretty much the same chassis as the Q97 and the C97. Apart from this one uses a different power supply, a bit older. But, uh, very common fault on all the Q9 and the C9 series, uh, 50 inch plasmas. Here's the TV will click on, it'll work for a bit, then it'll click off and it won't restart until you uh, leave it off for a good few hours and then it will restart and work for a little bit then it will fall out again and that's what the owner said to me basically and that problem is in my guess uh, broken solder joints on the power supply which is very common on I think all Samsung plasmas apart from the real older ones um, but Ones like this and above, even the newer ones, they had a lot of issues with broken solder joints. I've fixed quite a few. But the uh, Q9 and the C96 series were very problematic with broken solder joints. And this is also one that has a dodgy Y main, I think. Well, it isn't dodgy yet, but it has the parts that have a tendency to blow up. Uh, quite often, so I'm probably going to have to uh, replace some parts on the Y main as well, but hopefully uh, this doesn't have one of those Y mains that likes to uh, throw a wobbly after a while and kill the buffer. But either way, I'm going to modify this. I am... This isn't a repair guide, this is just a log of what I'm doing. But after I finish repairing the power supply and the Y main and the X main, uh, because if you see my Q97 video, I repaired all three boards at the same time. Um, and I'm going to add some cooling fans to this. I'm going to add about four 80mm fans across the top here uh, to help cool the TV because one of the main reasons for the solder joints failing on these is because of how hot the TV gets because it's not fan cooled. Um, it's also due to the fact that Samsung didn't engineer them properly. Um, Basically what they did was, uh, on the devices, like the switching transistors uh, that drive the transformers, uh, have a lot of current uh, passing through them, and Samsung uh, never riveted the solder joints to the board, which basically just reinforces them. And uh, over time, due to the heat and the expansion of the PCB, and the heat sink and everything, and the current th flowing through the device eventually what happens is the solder joint uh, cracks and what happens then is the device is no longer connected to the board and sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't because the connection basically then goes intermittent or it just completely breaks off but a lot of the time on these it's intermittent so it will work one day and then the next it won't well, either way, it's going to need to be fixed, and this is dusty. I wonder how bad <laughs> what the dust build-up in here is going to be, because already I can tell it's pretty bad. And we probably also have some bad caps on the power supply in the X main and the Y main. Usual stuff, but I'm going to repair the boards, add some fans up here, help cool the TV, hopefully make it a bit more reliable. So let's get the back off. Okay, this is definitely dusty. <laughs> I'm going to do a shot of the main board first. These are clogged up with dust. The ports. Dust spill up there. There's vent holes and almost clogged. <laughs> the dust build up. Power supply. Oh god. It's like a blanket underneath it. <laughs> And one, two, three, four, five, uh, six bag capacitors on the power supply. Not good. They're going to need to be replaced. Um, so, I mean, just look at that. That's passively cooled as well. That hasn't got a fan sucking air up through it. It's uh, pretty bad. <laughs> and X main I'll do next. Pretty bad too. Bad cap on there. 
that can cause a lot of issues, that one bad cap can. Heat sinks are pretty, pretty clogged on that as well. Uh, do -do. Uh, why main I'll do next. Again, pretty clogged up the dust. The Y main doesn't have any bad caps on it. Um, it has HEC brand caps, which are more reliable than the Samoa ones that are used on like the X main uh, there. But I'm not very happy. Well, um, and the reason is is because this Y main uses the 88N30W type transistors which have a habit of blowing up um, as soon as one of them fails they all go short circuit because they're in parallel uh, that little drive effect there fails and its resistor blows up as well and then our buffer IC at the top here goes boom and that's not good um, so my solution to that is I'm probably going to just swap this Y main over because I have another one uh, in another TV which uh, the, I'm beginning to think the TV isn't actually fixable so I'll probably just swap it over and the other TV that I have the same Y main in which doesn't have those type of FETs it's those type that blow up, the other types don't like uh, the RJH34W I think um, they don't blow up nearly as much and there's some other ones that are used but those FETs have a habit of going short circuit but the other TV that I'm going to take its Y main out of which has more reliable FETs has a fan directly over the Y main heat sinks so that should make it a bit more reliable and the other TV as I said I don't know if it's going to be fixable because the panel is very worn out in it um, so the Y main, I'm probably just going to swap it over. I mean, if it doesn't work in the other one, or the one, the Y main from the other TV doesn't work in this one, uh, what I'll do is I'll replace those uh, four FETs there and that little uh, driver one there just to help it, uh, help it out a bit more. Um, because replacing the scan ICs, you know, it's not exactly difficult if you've had, if you're good at soldering like I am, but. It's just a bit of a pain to do. Uh, these SMD caps on this uh, e-buffer as well look a bit bulged. But uh, this TV, um, the actual address buffers aren't mounted to this card. Um, you can detach, detach them, sorry, and replace them separately, uh, which is good. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this thing is dusty. It's going to need a bit of work, but it's nothing I can't sort. I wonder how many hours this thing has it has on it to get a dust coat like that. Casing isn't much better either. In fact, I might just hoover that up quick, just to show you how bad that is. Looks a lot better already. <laughs> I'm going to start hoovering this thing and take the boards out of it and uh, start getting some parts on order. Should be pretty uh, easy to do, but. And I actually like working on these because there's quite a few things that need correcting before you can you know, actually sell the TV. And I'm going to add some fans as well, as I already said, just to help this thing cool a bit better. Um, so I'm going to start taking out the boards. Just a before shot of how dusty this is. Just removing the boards, and here's what I do before I take them out. Um, 
you have to unplug every connector going to each board before you even bother taking out the screws because if you're taking out the screws and you're trying to unplug connectors you're just going to be pulling up on things and it's not going to be good uh, so start with the Y main there's a ribbon cable going from the bottom uh, right hand corner going to the T-con there's a little latch there you just flip that up and you can pull the cable out and then afterwards shut the flap down because there's very fragile pins in there and they can easily get damaged but with the connector lid closed uh, the chances of that getting damaged is very little and then we have our main VS input connector here and that just has a little clip, you just push on that and you can take it out now here's our Y buffer boards, now I like to remove these connected to the Y main in a lot of cases when I remove these but uh, if you're fixing like the Y main or so, what I'll tend to do is remove the Y main separately. But to remove these, you want to disconnect the ribbons going to the panel first. Now, the idiots that I used to work with, I've seen tear at least three of these uh, block connectors off that are bonded to the panel, and repairing them is very difficult to do. I've had to repair a couple, and it was uh, not easy. Um, these have very little copper wires in them that go to each row on the screen. The Y main's job is to address and light up every row on the screen when it's being requested. And then the uh, E buffer, which addresses the vertical rows, which has all the colours, separate colours on them. So it, this can address a red a green or a blue pixel and then all this does is it lights up the row when it's being addressed by that because this doesn't have a high enough voltage going through it to be able to light up a row on the screen or an individual pixel on the screen so this just basically creates the high voltage for it um, <coughs> and then the X main it basically just keeps all the pixels pre-lit uh, and also discharges them as well when requested but you want to be very careful when removing these connectors um, the people that I used to work with used to grab them from the corner and just literally yank them out and of course it rips very easy normally at the tab here where the plastic is to remove these you just go one corner you just pry it up very slowly and it is difficult to do with the camera yeah, normally you can just pull it out like that. You don't want to be yanking up on one corner so that it's half in and half out. So that's how you rip the connector off. And that's not fun. <laughs> now the Y buffer has this uh, little bridge connector here. This also breaks very easily. But on this, I'm, as I'm removing all boards, all three boards separately, because the Y upper buffer, and the Y lower buffer, and the Y main, I'm just going to leave that plugged in and then I'll unplug the buffer cards separately afterwards. <coughs> the power supply we have two connectors going to the main board here. Those just have little clips. We have our main. Uh, this connector goes to the address buffer, which has the VA voltage. This goes to the X main, just unplug that. And this goes to the Y main. Then we have a mains AC input connector here. I'm getting dust all on my hands. <laughs> so that's it for the power supply. The X main is very similar. We have a ribbon cable going to the T con, which has a little uh, latch type of connector there. Just close the latch afterwards just to protect the pins. Have our X main or oh, VS uh, input wire. And block connector that just has a little clip. And look at the dust, man. Now, again, the people I used to work with, I also seen them rip these connectors off coming out the X main. And I've seen a lot of people actually do this wrong. I'm going to plug this top one back in. I should have, in theory, left these all plugged in from the start, but oh well. Now, I've seen a lot of people mess up these and plugging them. And that one's been a bit difficult to plug back in. And 
Yeah, in theory you need two hands to plug that in, but I'll just do this as an example. I've seen a lot of people that yank on the sides of these and push the connector up and try and tug it down to get it out. It's really easy to do. Just pinch together the two little clips at the ends of the main block connector here. And it'll slide out. You see how that slides out? All you do then, get some fingers, push down on the connector and slide it out like that. Same for pushing it in, keep it as low as possible. Get it lined up with the uh, connection tab, slide it in and shut the uh, tab there. Easy as pie. And there's two little locking tabs here which and of course this main connector block has some little tabs inside it as well which lock onto these and you can't just yank these out because you'll just rip the connector off and I've seen that happen a few times with the people I used to work with and then uh, as these aren't attached to the X main direct they have a little extension wire that just has a little clip for it and you can just disconnect it I'm not going to take these out of the TV, I only unplugged that just for an example. And that's all the boards I'm taking out of this thing, it's the X main, the power supply, and the Y main, and the Y buffers. So I'm going to take those out, there's several screws on them, and I'm going to hoover them before I even bother trying to service them. This uh, mark here is not anything like water or where somebody's poured something in the TV, it's actually from where one of the capacitors is blown up on the power supply it's uh, blown up about here I think it's the cap for the 5 volt standby uh, supply, it's blown up and the electrolyte is squirted onto the back here and it's dripped down and put over here <laughs> that's sad this thing was an absolute dust nightmare but it's not cleaner now completely hoovered off everything the boards were an absolute disgrace, I've still got a bit there to clean but it's uh, looking a lot better cleaned off the motherboard and the motherboard tray nearly so what I'm going to do now is put the back on the TV and I'm going to uh, start investigating these uh, boards that are used I'm going to start with the buffer boards um, I'm going to put little heat sinks on all these scan ICs. These are just little aluminium RAM heat sinks. We need some silicon thermal plaster. <coughs> and just get these mounted on the uh, ICs there, helps them cool down a little. Just makes them a bit more reliable. Um, these, should, in theory, should have been heat sunk uh, from factory, but Samsung didn't, which uh, of course causes issues. <coughs> I think I might have to cut back some of the glue on the topmost ICs on both buffer cards because I can't quite get the heat sinks on but I can do that with this little spudger here just trim the glue off so I'm going to do that and then before I put these on I'll just clean the IC with some IPA and then apply the uh, thermal plaster <coughs> and uh, stick down the heat sink then on the Y main, uh, I'm not using this Y main as I already said. Um, I'm going to add a heat sink to uh, this uh, chip here. Well, there's a little MOSFET, sorry. <coughs> Same type of heat sink. Just going to put it on the top there, just help that cool a little. And uh, that's just something I do on these Y mains. I'm going to get the buffer done first. Got the uh, Y buffers completed. Got the uh, heat sinks on there. And I've got to let those dry for the next 24 hours or so. <coughs> now, these two caps here, the 168 microfarad 25 volts for the X main cap, and the other is for this cap on the Y main, which is a common failure. <coughs> um, and I'm not going to replace the other two that I normally replace because they're actually good. Or okay caps in my opinion <coughs> and this group here is for the power supply I didn't find any cracked solder joints on this supply um, so I'm unsure why it cuts out during use but <coughs> you might have got it the wrong wrong way around or something I don't know 
Uh, the bag caps on here are Samwa WB series, which is known defective. Whereas the RD series, which are what the majority of the rest are, are okay. All of these bad ones are WB series. <coughs> the others are RD series. And I've seen them that have been in TVs that have had over 40,000 hours use and they still test completely okay. Um, so they're probably alright. Uh, so I've got all the caps sorted for this. Got the heat sink on there. And uh, I'm going to replace these tomorrow. And before any other idiot says, you know. You can get static with the boards laying on my bed like this. Well, I've never had an issue, and I've fixed nearly three or well, four hundred TVs. Uh, so, anyone who comments that will ban because I've had a couple of assholes seeing that. But anyway, um, I'm going to get these uh, repaired, and then we'll see how it goes tomorrow. By the way, I'm taking the other Y main out of this Philips 50PFP 5532D-05 which has a faulty control board um, and I added some fans to call the sustain boards well, I've got to order a control board for that so I'm just going to put the y other Y main which has the commonly failing FETs on it and just swap it over with this one which is more reliable and the other one has a fan directly over it so that's why I'm doing that. Alright, so I've got the boards repaired. Power supplies all recapped. Yeah, I'm using some cheaper ones there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, y main is out of the Phillips that I've repaired. And that Phillips, by the way. Replace that Toshiba Fert, that Moss Fert, and a fuse at the top. Y buffers are all heat sunk now. So they should be a lot more reliable. Resoldered several joints on the supply as well. The X main recapped. And first power up test. I'm going to power it up in the service menu here. So, info, menu, mute. Power. See how many hours this thing has on it. Okay, so there's no lines out on the panel either, that's good. Holy crap. Have a look at that hour count. 28,427. Fair enough for a Samsung. That's a lot of hours. I wonder if we have any mal discharge on this. I don't think I've even seen any mal discharge. And this display doesn't even have any mal discharge. For 28,000 hours, I don't see a single hint of mal discharge. <laughs> Normally, you get a ton in this top corner here. I don't see a single hint of any mal discharge. That is very good. For a Samsung. That's pretty decent. So now it means I'm not going to have to faff about with the sustain voltages. Sweet. <coughs> so now what I'm going to do is see about adding some fans into this. Um, because they get pretty damn hot. But now I've seen the TV powers up and the panel is all good. It's nearly on the road to being case closed. I'm going to add a 120mm fan to this. And I'm going to super glue it to the frame here, on the back case. Because <coughs> I don't have any uh, fan screws. But I'm going to run this at 7 volts as well, so it should move a decent amount of air. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I've got the fan super glued in place. I used a fair bit of super glue and that is not going anywhere. I think the only way to take this back off would be to snap the fan basically to get that back off there. So that is excellent. <coughs> so 
So now there's a few options that I could uh, choose to power this. Now this fan here. Now it's a 12 volt capable fan, but I don't want to run it at 12 volts because that's going to be too loud, and you know I don't want to be receiving complaints saying that the TV is has a loud whirring noise to it and it's not watchable. So the power supply has a 12 volt there. Uh, we have a 5 volt rail, 5.3 volts. Uh, now what I might do is apply 12 volts to the positive pin of the fan and then apply 5.3 volts or 5 volts to the uh, negative uh, pin of the fan or the minus pin. And what that'll do is that will uh, run the fan at 7 or 6.7 .7 volts. Uh, you should look up how that works uh, if you're interested in how that works. But uh, yeah, applying 12 volts to the positive and 5.3 volts to the negative will make it a 7 volt fan technically. And that will be a lot quieter and it will still move a good amount of air. But. This power supply has some fan connectors for uh, where you sh where this manufacturer should have soldered some connectors and had actually added some fans to this TV, but Samsung never did that because uh, they cost cut basically. And now the motherboard on the connector that goes to the motherboard, we see we have fan control pins, fan on and fan. Uh, I think D. I don't know if that's like the control or something. <laughs> Now I'm not sure if this motherboard has like a temperature sensor somewhere or if the power supply has one but uh, I don't know if I want to bother with that and I can literally just solder the fan wires onto these uh, terminals here and do it that way. I mean I doubt I'll probably be taking the back off this anytime soon. I might just add the uh, one 120, 120mm fan there because so that's going to be enough. I'm just going to put the back cover on so you can see how it'll be situated. Here's what I've got going, 120mm there, 80mm there, and a 60mm here, right over the Y main, so that's going to extract some of the air from that. So, I super glued it down, that's still drying at the minute, but that's only just been done a few minutes ago, and that's solid already. I'm not going to add a fan over the X main. It doesn't really need it, to be honest. I mean, that Philips there, I have a fan on the X main in it. You know, after leaving it on for about five hours, the, the air coming out of there was, you know, cold. So it doesn't really need one, in my opinion. <coughs> but two fans over the power supply, and that one's sort of over the Y main, I suppose. And one directly over the Y main. This thing should be a bit more reliable. This I'm running on 5.3 volts, and this I'm running on 5.3 volts. This is being ran on 7 volts, but if it's too loud, I'll step it down to 5.3 volts instead. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. So I'll wait for the super glue to properly dry, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's what I've got. Uh, all the fans are off 5.3 volts, because on 12 volts, or 7.3 volts, that fan is too loud and so are the others so they're all properly secured, the wiring is absolutely hideous at the minute but I need to clean that up and you'll hear the sustain boards it's on par with the sustain buzz so it's not that bad that's moving a good amount of air so that Y main is going to get some airflow across it So this is solid, you know, this is stuck down solid. So I'm going to tidy up the wiring and get the top cover back on. Uh, so let's just do a quick overview. So I had to recap the power supply. And replaced the Y, or swapped the Y main from another TV which I've refurbished. Heat sunk all the buffer ICs, added some fans. With super glue, which is a very effective method, and that's just going to help this thing cool a bit better. And recaps the X main as well. So, going to uh, tidy up the wiring and seal this thing up. 
Okay, so I've got all the screws back in the TV and I'm going to power it up in the service menu. Here the fans a little, but when the sustaining starts and you get sound and everything, you know, you can barely hear it. <coughs> you can see the Windows logo from Windows 10 burnt in. So yeah, that's uh, look at that hour count. 28,427. And that isn't actually mal discharge on there either. Not a single lick of mal discharge. So uh, something you rarely see with Samsung plasmas is ones with this amount of hours on them not having mal discharge. So factory reset it. I'm gonna tune it in and everything. <coughs> Slight bit of image burn on there, but nothing major. So, um, okay, skip that one. Start digital channels there. So, tune it all in. And here's the fan noise at the minute. Eighty mils moving a good amount of air. That's moving a fair bit. And I can feel cold air coming from the exhaust of the wine main there, so that's also a good sign. So we're going to let this tune in and I'll get back to you. ...to find out what can be done about the horrors of the Zika virus. It came from nowhere. And you can barely hear that, uh, well, the fan noise. You can only hear it when it's on. You know, you can hear it slightly and you can also hear the sustaining buzz. Um, but... Uh, with the sound on low, you can barely hear it. So now I'm going to test this for a little bit. I'll probably will won't finish testing today because it's quite late and I want to go to sleep. But uh, I'll set this up for testing tomorrow, so I'll let you know how that goes.